Inside Oceanside, your monthly magazine about the people, issues, and events in Oceanside. Hello, and welcome to the November 2001 edition of Inside Oceanside, your monthly community news magazine. I'm Don Williamson. And I'm Amy Forsythe. Here at Inside Oceanside, we feature the people, places, issues, and events that shape our community. That's right. And this month, rather than being out on location, we're in the studio. Figured we'd spend some time talking about a couple of great events that are coming up and talk about something just a little serious. But first on, let's share with you what we've got lined up for this month's Inside Oceanside. Find out how the historic Americanization School became a community resource center. The annual body surfing tournament was in Oceanside again, and it was big. There's more sand on Oceanside beaches. Find out where it came from. And noted author Victor Villasenor gives us some words and thoughts to live by. All those stories and more on this month's Inside Oceanside. Before we go to our first segment, we want to tell you about a great party for, I guess it's for everybody, but it's a Harry Potter party. What are the ages for people that read Harry Potter? I'd say all ages, Don, but for this particular party, it's children five and up. Okay, and it's given by the Oceanside Public Library. It's going to be held in the community rooms that are just adjacent to the library. The library is at 330 North Coast Highway and right behind it are community rooms. And it's on Friday, November 16th. What time does this start, Amy? It starts at 4 o'clock and it's completely free. It is. It's free. There's going to be a big party at the community center. Then they're going over to the Regal Cinema and 92.5, the radio station is going to be there. There's going to be music and prizes. And it, although it's free, you have got to register. You've got to call and register so they know how many people are going to be there. And what's that number, Amy? Sure, Don. That's 435-5590. That's right. Harry Potter party, Friday, November 16th. The kids are going to love it. It's going to be a wonderful time. Call the number you see on the screen and don't miss it. And if you missed the recent body surfing championship here in Oceanside, well, Tom Sheridan's here and he caught all the action. For 25 years, Oceanside has played host to the World Body Surfing Championships. This year, the event has attracted over 300 surfers from as far away as New Zealand and Brazil. It's a major sports event, and yet it has the feel of a family reunion. The surfing fraternity has been referred to as a tribe. And here at the World Body Surfing Championships this weekend at the Oceanside Pier, the event is as much about meeting as it is about competing. Friendships that have started from here and uh, have continued through the years. They see each other annually. I would guess that a lot of our competitors, this is the only thing that they enter. They may be a bicyclist, but they don't enter any bicycle competition. Or they may work out running, and, but they don't enter any, any triathlons or marathon races. And body surfing, it just gets them together and, quite frankly, have just as good a time whether they win or lose. But there are some that are out there to win. There is a significant social component to the World Body Surfing Championships, but they do keep score for a reason. It's definitely evolved into something where the competition is fierce. Uh, the competitors are hard swimmers. They're doing better maneuvers, smoother maneuvers. The judging is more difficult because there's more and more body surfers up there judging. Uh, so th the sport's come a long way. And while it may not have the following of, say, the NFL. Body surfing has a special appeal as a spectator sport. And what you're looking for is the takeoff. There's underwater takeoffs. There's butterfly takeoffs. They have every every guy has his own style, and that's what makes it really fun to watch. 
As Ray Duncan said, the event attracts all kinds. You never know who you might bump into on the beach. I body surf and board surf. I've always done both of them, but um, I'm not good enough board surfer to be in any contest or anything. And, and this is uh, something that I probably like or enjoy a little more. The World Body Surfing Championships brings together a unique blend of athletes and fans to these shores every August. Great people, great event, and an Oceanside institution. This is Tom Sheridan reporting for Inside Oceanside. That body surfing tournament sure looked like fun, huh, Amy? Making Oceanside very popular. That's right, and something else that's going to make the city very popular is a great holiday home tour. A lot of people don't realize there are fabulous estates right here in Oceanside in Morro Hills. And as a fundraiser for the Vista Community Clinic, that does tons of good work here in the city and in Vista. They're having a holiday home tour you know, to benefit the Vista Community Clinic. It's on December 2nd. And all the money goes to the Vista Community Clinic. If you want tickets, you can call 725-2110. And if you want more information, because you may need to know where to go and how it works, you call 631-5000, extension 1139. That's actually the Vista Community Clinic, and they have an extension set up to give you more information. And this really is more than just seeing houses with lights on them. They're gonna have these fabulous estates. They're gonna be decorated outside, inside. There's gonna be a shuttle service that will pick you up and take you around to these homes, as well as to Heritage Park. Sure. It's a great deal, December 2nd, Call the numbers on the screen. It does cost $20, but of course, the money goes to the Vista Community Clinic. That's right. Not only does Oceanside have beautiful estate homes, but it also has historic buildings. Find out how the Americanization School has become a great community resource. Here's Katherine Colanco. The Relocated Neighborhood Resource Center in Crown Heights is helping residents connect online and with their community. The new home of the Resource Center is inside the Americanization School, a place that has a significant history in this neighborhood. In fact, it's been here for so long, it's been declared a historical building. It was started in 1930, 1931, and basically it was used to Americanize people that were not from this country basically to incorporate them into, into the culture, into the customs of this country. That's basically what they were doing and to teach them the language. The center held a grand opening recently to invite residents to check out the new location. What the Resource Center does, we offer a variety of resources. We offer, we have ESL classes, that's English as a second language. We offer computer classes. We have a lot of community meetings. Resource centers also provide a great link between the community and the city. Um, we get a lot of input at community meetings on what the problems are in the neighborhood, you know, what's going on. Uh, we can pass on information to Oceanside Police Department or to maintenance, buildings and maintenance, to basically to any of the city organizations that, that we're dealing with. Um, a lot of times we get good information at community meetings of, of what people would want, what, they, what direction they want the city to go in. The goals of all the centres is to have some after school programs where the kids will come in, where they can get help with homework, um, where they can, can um, participate in different group activities. The 10 newly installed computers with internet access may just narrow the so-called digital divide that some fear separates low income families from technological advantages others take for granted. There is that big void in the community for a lot of the lower income areas where they don't have computer access. Our goal is to, is to get as many computers basically available in this community as we can. They have access to the computers, to the internet, which is very helpful for their homework. Um, a lot of these children have to do projects, um, they have to do reports, so it's, it's very useful for them. Aquí hacen las niñas las tareas en la tarde. Resident Maria Luna says she likes the center because children can go there for help with their homework after school. It has made a difference, a very big difference. It's the neighborhood is not the way it used to be. When it comes to children being out in the streets, they have a safe place to be here. This is Catherine Colanco reporting for Inside Oceanside. 
so we're lucky to have the Americanization School here, and we're also lucky to have internationally known author Victor Villasenor. Inside Oceanside producer Janine Posell spent some time with him, and here's that story. Like my grandmother used to say, there are no strangers once we get to know each other's story. These words preface Victor Villasenor's latest book, 13 Senses. At a recent book signing, Victor shared some of these family tales of love, adversity, magic, and wonderment. The saying is that in every bottle of tequila, the first half you find God, the second half you find the devil in the same bottle. <laughs> and uh, how many of you have tried that? An amiable group waited eagerly for their signed copy of 13 Senses, often with a hug thrown in. His passion for life is infectious, but it hasn't always been an easy road for this writer. This book was rejected six times all over New York. And when we sent them Rain of Gold to say, you know, we have over a quarter of a million sales, they rejected that too. This is just last year. They said, one woman said, it's not my cup of tea. Another one said, I don't believe in that. And, and then a couple of men didn't even, they're just not interested. You know, it's not my cup of tea. It's not tea, I told him. It's a book. Victor lives in Oceanside, but his books and philosophies have reached out around the world. The earth is round. We still talk as if it's flat. If we go so far, we're going to fall off. The earth is round. There's no beginning or end. We don't fall off, we go real far. We're not going to fall off, we go into the unknown. What it means is creation didn't happen. It's happening. There are no nouns. Everything is a verb. 13 Census launches a new HarperCollins division called Rayo for Latino writers. Rayo, which means lightning. And the guy read it there, and his name is Rene Alegria. And he was raised in Tucson by his grandparents, not his parents, and across the border in Nogales. And he read it, and what did he say? My grandparents told me all about this. This is like going home. So he understood and he bought the book immediately. At his family's gracious Oceanside Hacienda, the rooms are filled with powerful indigenous art. Victor's office is upstairs, where he starts his writing in longhand each day around 3 a.m. I'm either gonna be the greatest writer I can every day, every moment, or I'm gonna die trying. And my father said, Mijo, te quiero decir que if you had made a hundred million dollars, I wouldn't be as proud of you as I am today. You have made my mother live on these pages. Now the whole world can know what that little dark Indian woman was. When he started school, Victor experienced the hot fist of racism, yet managed to develop a profound belief in the essential goodness of the human race. I started kindergarten here on, in Dittmar. In fact, it's not Dittmar School, it's up the hill. I think it was called Nevada School. And the first day of school, we're hit in the head. I don't speak any English, and by the first week, I understand Mexicans are no good and they're stupid and Spanish is a vulgar thing to say. So I had such rage. I was ready to kill. I was a time bomb. And I went to Mexico with relatives and I found out that I came from this great culture. Then this older woman introduced me to books and I said, oh my God, I can reach more people with books than with guns. People that get bitter or stay angry, they poison themselves. Anger hurts you. As Victor's father said, a good story could save our life. I'm Janine Posell, getting hugged for Inside Oceanside. Before we go to our last segment, we wanted to take just a moment to talk about something that's on the minds of everyone. Since September 11th tragedy, we've gone through a very difficult time in this country. We're currently in a state of war. And what that means is not only has our active military been involved, 
many of our reservists have also. In fact, you may turn on Inside Oceanside next month and find Amy not being here. Amy was a sergeant in the Marines and now she's a reservist. Amy, what's your status now? Well, Don, I have not been called to active duty as of yet. However, we've been put on a short leash, a 72-hour window that we could be called and made to report to the unit here aboard Camp Pendleton locally. Hmm. You know, one of the things that a lot of people don't think about is what happens. You pick up and you leave. You leave your job, your home. What sort of things do you have to do to prepare for that? Well, Don, first we start with preparing documents like a will or a power of attorney, communicating with your landlord, with your employer, with your family members about your status and what that would mean if you were deployed for six months or a year. Um, also, reservists are people you might not suspect. and and they're working in law enforcement, civil service, they're teachers. So really is a ripple effect if the reservists get called up who's going to take their spot and the co-workers in our community will have to come together and, and fill that void. That's true. Well, we certainly hope that you don't have to go, Amy. And if you Thanks. do, you know that our prayers will be with you. Thank you very much. Okay. When you think of Oceanside, you think of beaches and you think of sand. Recently, we got a lot more sand. Bob Nanaga tells us where it came from. Got sand is a question that's asked frequently here in Southern California, and often the answer is no. Well, the city of Oceanside, in cooperation with the San Diego Association of Governments and other coastal cities, are doing their part to make sure that when the got sand question is asked, the answer is yes. Hi. I'm Robert Naniga, and in this month's Green Scene, I'm here at Oceanside's new and improved wide sandy beaches as we give you an update on the sand replenishment project, where it's going from here, and what we can expect for our future sand needs. Before they built the harbor, and that was back in the early 60s, uh, Oceanside was known for its very wide, very clean, very pristine beaches. There, as a result of the harbor being built, the groins being put in place to protect the harbor, it diverted the natural flow of sand that moves up and down the coast and nourish our beaches. So we're assisting nature by pumping sand from offshore to onshore to, to ensure that we have you know, ongoing white beaches. The coastal cities got together from Oceanside all the way down, including Imperial Beach, and we said this is a regional problem. It's not just a problem in Oceanside or Carlsbad or Encinitas. So we started to plan this back in 1993. We had a preservation strategy, how we would get sand, put it on the beach, cooperate. That was the hardest thing to do. It was so hard to say, we have X amount of sand. We had two million cubic yards of sand. And we sat down and we worked so that everybody would get some sand. What it means to our city, quite simply, sand equates to additional revenue for our city. Sand equates to additional uh, protection of lives and properties for our residents here in Oceanside. And look around you. We now have in our, in our county, I think one of the best beaches in the whole county of San Diego. And after seeing pictures of what's being, ha what's being done here, it's going to encourage and invite more people to come to our city. And that's a very positive thing. We in California don't spend money on our beaches. It's really Delaware, that tiny little state of Delaware, spends $4.78 per capita. We spend .07, and look at the miles, thousand miles of coastline that we have. We just don't spend money on our beaches, and we're going to have to rethink this because tourism, especially here in California, is so important to our economy. The project put two million cubic yards of sand total on 12 beaches in the region. That's a lot of sand, and we want to make sure that we keep track of it. It cost about $17.5 million to do this, so this is valuable stuff we want to know where it goes, how it affects the environment. So we're going to be monitoring it for the next four years at least. We're going to be monitoring some of the reefs and the kelp beds and the, uh, the uh, important biology that's associated with it to see if there's any significant impacts. I always love to see a project when it's completed. We did work on this for a long time together. I want to compliment uh, the committee under Ann's direction and all of the agencies and the representatives from the agencies that made it, made it happen. 
We're here today to celebrate, and we're here today to celebrate a return in time to what we were discussing earlier. These beaches are so important to us. They're so important to the families. They're so important to the people that want to come down and enjoy the ocean. And for so many years, we've worked on this project, and you can look at it. Now we have a beach that is wide enough, broad enough. It is, it's, it's actually going to beckon people back to enjoy the beach, enjoy the sand, and enjoy the ocean. It's truly a celebration of years and years of hard work. That about does it for this edition of Inside Oceanside. Next month we'll do our special holiday edition and then in January as always there'll be the best of Inside Oceanside. And we're already working on next month's show so if you have any comments, questions or story ideas contact us at the numbers on your screen. That's right and until next time remember it's always great to be Inside Oceanside. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's 13 cents and here's where my parents got married, right there. My, my father and mother are right here getting married. The priest is facing them and everybody's in the room around them, so it happened right here. Six foot five. All of them, all of them. And I do not write on the computer, I write over there. Watch the bird. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing.